<clears throat> related to the blood. It can lead to cancer. It can lead to gastric issues. We've seen our nitrates level increase over the years. And we've also seen our chlorides level. Chlorides is very interesting because chlorides are an indicator of saltwater intrusion. And we have a very fragile, thin lens of water that we all draw from. The more that we draw, which is another reason why I'm not in favor of development, um, or overdevelopment, that is, um, <clears throat> when the more water that we draw, the more of the salt um, <coughs> from the surrounding area that we can draw into this water. And so we could be polluting our water the more that we draw. <clears throat> when you have a home um, system like a reverse osmosis unit that many people have, I don't have that. I have a, a, a hardness removal unit which takes out my iron. Um, these are not friendly to the environment. First of all, my system has to be backwashed at least once a week, if not more frequently. That water, which is a briny, salty water with all of the uh, iron removed from it, goes right back into the ground. Where does that go? It goes into the groundwater. So over time, we're polluting ourselves with these home systems. In addition, the reverse osmosis, I'm not sure if people are aware of it, but for every gallon produced, you lose half a gallon. So there's a 50% reject, again, of a very salty, briny, polluted water back into the ground. And so we are continually polluting our fragile lens of water the more that we use these home treatment systems. So they're not very environmentally friendly. <clears throat> now, speaking as an environmental engineer, I'd like to talk about the many advantages that public water have. And then we can talk about what some of the disadvantages are. I'd like you to see the whole picture. Certainly, long-term improved health effects. Um, if, if I could say that once, I'd say it a thousand times. There is <clears throat> no comparison to the health effects of the city water versus the water that we're drinking, even with a home treatment system. Another key point is what we talked about, the pollution of our fragile aquifer. Um, first, from over withdrawals through development, through the people that live here right now, and through these private home treatment systems. Reliability of service. I do not have a generator. My home would not accommodate placement of a generator. And so when power goes out, I do not have water. And I cannot flush. And we, have to, we would have to live like that until the power is restored. <clears throat> the protection of home plumbing, the reduced amount of discharge of backwash water, and also the effect on septic systems. When you have a well, you have to be very, very careful where you place a septic system. And almost all of our homes in the same area that we're talking about have septic. So when you do not use wells and, and the wells are closed and you now can be drinking public water, fail, these people who have failing septic systems have greater flexibility as to where they can place them on their property. We talked, uh, I heard about that, that you'd like to go for an environmental review process. I'm rather familiar with environmental review. I've actually performed several, um, <clears throat> gone through several CEQA processes and performed several environmental impact statements for some of my clients. So I'd like to talk about what might come out of an environmental review. Um, if anyone would like it on the board, I've actually brought the full environmental assessment form from CEQA. I can leave that with you. But the, the key topics are public health, natural resources, endangered species, animal habitat, noise, traffic, transportation, air quality, archaeological resources. You can see there's a rather <coughs> long list. Let me try to boil it down for you, which ones I would think would be the ones identified as having adverse or positive permanent um, impacts. Well, certainly public health, as I've talked about, and certainly natural resources in the protection of the fragile aquifer, and perhaps, and also energy consumption, because these home heating systems and also well pumps have a large environmental footprint with respect to energy consumption, especially reverse osmosis units, which have to operate at much higher pressures than you would get from public water or even from your well pump. 
The negative impacts are what most of the people who, I guess, are here tonight and what we've heard from previous speakers have to do about <clears throat> the um, development issue. So let me talk to you as a, pub, as a, as a uh, professional planner. That power is in your hands. 